Okay, good afternoon. Good, good afternoon. afternoon. Today's word is Galatians chapter 5. Now, the famous chapter. Mm -hmm. I love you. Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. I'm going to read first and you all together read the next uh, in turn. So we're going to read in turn and the last verse, verse 26, we're going to read all together. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. Mark my words, I Paul, tell you that if you let yourselves be circumcised, Christ will be of no value to you at all. Again, I declare to every man who lets himself be circumcised that he is obligated to obey the whole law. You who are trying to be justified by law have been alienated from Christ. You have fallen away from Christ. But by faith we eagerly await through the Spirit the righteousness for which we hope. For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision nor uncircumcision has any value. The only thing that counts is faith, expressing itself through love. You were running a good race. Who cut in on you and kept you from obeying the truth? That kind of persecution does not come from the one who calls you. Persuasion. A little yeast works through the whole batch of dough. I am confident in the Lord that you will take no other view. The one who is throwing you into confusion will pay the penalty, whoever he may be. Brothers, if I am still preaching circumcision, why am I still being persecuted? In that case, the offense of the cross has been abolished. As for those agitators, I wish they would go the whole way and emasculate themselves. You, my brothers, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the sinful nature. Rather, serve one another in love. The entire law is summed up in a single command. Love your neighbor as yourself. If you keep on biting and devouring each other, watch out or you will be destroyed by each other. So I say, live by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the sinful nature. For the sinful nature desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit what is contrary to the sinful nature. They are in conflict with each other, so that you do not do what you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not on the law. The acts of the sinful nature are obvious, sexual immorality, impurity, and debauchery, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, Sections. and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the sinful nature with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, 
Let us keep in step with the Spirit. Together, let us not become conceited, provoking and envying each other. Amen. Okay, finally, Galatians chapter 5. Uh, yeah, finally, uh, we are almost the end of our small journey between um, searching out the relationship between the law and the Spirit. And here in chapter 5, Paul now speaks uh, explicitly more than ever regarding the freedom won by Jesus Christ, um, the fact that we are freed from the law, but instead we are now under the Spirit. But, um, but still he says, he, what he emphasizes is, in, here in chapter 5 is, um, law is not really against the Spirit. You, you are really misunderstanding this. The law, um, the Pentateuch, the Mosaic law, the, the law, you see the law, Ten Commandments that God gave to Moses, God gave, more exactly, God gave through Israel, God gave to Israelites through Moses, that is not against the, the Spirit. Rather, Spirit is the, that's what Paul says, rather, Spirit is the completion perfection of the law. Amen. And I I think I have repeated this for several times again. But for the for the last time, I hope <laughs> for the last time I'm going to summarize <laughs> this um, into a very short comment. You see many people many Christians really you, you don't have to consider who are not Christians because they don't know about this. They don't know about the law. They don't know about God's law. They don't know about God's spirit. They know nothing. So don't worry about who are unbelievers. They know nothing still. Many people who at least consider themselves as Christians, they quite often, they misunderstand or they are confused between the relationship between the law and the spirit. Or more in general terms, in more general terms, they really don't understand how God works, how God worked in the Old Testament time and in the New Testament time. So they don't understand really the relationship between the Old Testament and the New Testament. Quite many people, even many Bible colleges, think uh, the Old Testament and the New Testament are two separate things, two separated things from God. God, especially, I, I don't know, I, now I'm learning here in Australian Bible College, so I know at least my Bible College uh, does not think in that way, but I know there are some conservative Bible Colleges or some conservative pastors or scholars, they think the principle, how God worked, how God saved people in the Old Testament time was different from the New Testament time. And I actually, I received this kind of question on last Thursday. <laughs> Exactly. Um, so I explain him. Um, no, no, no. That's kind of that's one of the mistakes that many Christians are making right now. But see, in the book of James, Apostle James said, "God never changes. God never changes. God has no spinning shadow. He is um, from beginning to the end. He is always the same." So, if we take that word literally, that means the, the principle or the way how God works now should be the same how God worked in the past, in the Old Testament time, right? That, I mean, that's the meaning of not change, isn't it? Yeah. If, it is not, if, if God changes his working style or working how he works how he the working way then that it means he has changed <laughs> then it, it it will make the word of apostle james as a line but 
But that's what many Christians think these days. But actually, God, how God worked, how God is working now, is still the same. Amen. In the Old Testament time, so you see here, um, now, how do we save? How, how, how are we saved? By faith. By faith, isn't it? That's what Paul always says uh, throughout the whole Galatians, throughout the whole book of Romans. By faith. By accepting what Jesus Christ completed, has completed. Salvation. Jesus, Jesus already completed our salvation. All we need to do is just accepting it. That's faith. That's faith. So, by faith, we are saved. Amen. But how can we prove that we have faith? Acting. Yes. In the book of James, Apostle James says, Don't you know that faith without action is actually dead? Yeah. How, can, how on earth are you going to prove that you have faith if you, don't, you, if you don't have your action? If someone, Apostle James says, if some, prob, uh, this is what will happen if you say you have faith but no action. This is what will happen. Someone will come to you and he will challenge to you saying, I have action, you say you have faith, show me your faith. I'm going to show what I believe through my action. And actually, so if there is no action, there is no way that we have our faith. The pr so really, it's like this. You see here, this is my mobile phone. This is back side of my mobile phone. This is front side of my mobile phone. I cannot have this mobile phone just the front side without back side. Mm -hmm. Right? You see here. Here. So this, there is a battery cover. And there's a front, um, how do you call it, screen. I cannot just have this screen without, <laughs> without battery. <laughs> Can't you separate it? Well, but it, will, it won't work if I separate the battery <laughs> out of this phone, right? Everything, ev the, the front side, the back side, everything must be together. Yeah. Otherwise, it, this phone would not function properly. That is the same with our faith and action. So that's why James, Apostle James said, if you have faith, there must be action. Amen. Uh, actually, Martin Luther, a little, uh, even Martin Luther was a little bit confused with this. Um. So Martin, because Martin Luther was so, um, um, how can I say, he, he was so pressed he was so pressured, uh, he, uh, he felt such pressure regarding Catholics' um, focus on acting, <laughs> uh, behaving right, that kind of thing. He, after he disclosed, after he found out the principle of faith, mm -hmm. self, saved by faith principle from the Book of Romans, that was... Um, that was the part that Martin Luther accepted really with great joy. Mm -hmm. And apparently, mm -hmm. if you see, if you look in just, um, if you look in the first sight, at first sight, uh, the book of James seems contrary to the book of Romans. Yeah. So Martin Luther was like, oh, book of James is just such a garbage. <laughs> <laughs> he actually said that, yeah. <laughs> I heard. But... It's a little bit of misunderstanding, actually. Mm -hmm. Even Paul said that. That's why Paul always says, even in Book of Romans he, and here in Galatians, you know, in Book of Romans and Galatians, the first part, Paul explains in great detail about the relationship between the law and the freedom won by Christ, the spirit, the spirit-filled life, life, the walking with God, 
the fact that we are free from law, free, free from the law, free from the law of sin, all those things, all those principles he explains in much detail in the first part, both in Romans and Galatians. In the later part, in, in case of Romans from chapter 12, in case of Galatians, here, chapter 5, <laughs> he, now he starts to um, explain and demonstrate how spirit-filled person's life would be appear, would appear. He demonstrates that, he explains that in much great detail. Why? He, Paul, that, because that's what Paul implies. You cannot have just faith without this kind of life. You cannot say that. If you don't have this life, you got to measure your faith again. Yeah. You have to rethink whether you really have faith in regarding this part in your life or not. <clears throat> so that's how we prove our faith. Amen. So um, we are saved by faith. The way of proving our faith is through action. Where does the power come from which makes us to act? Holy the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit who is within us, who resides in us, he, he repeats the word. He repeats the word of God every day, every moment. Amen. Literally every second. <laughs> you see, I, I know you all have experience when you think in a bit wrong way or, you, or your emotion goes in a bit wrong way or you uh, feel a bit temptation that you want to act in, in a way which is not God's, then you can hear really, you can hear small voice from your, from inside of you, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Like, uh, mm -hmm. I don't do that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Would you stop there? Yeah. <laughs> Would you stop there, please? <laughs> I don't want to go any further yes. <laughs> like that. That's the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, Holy Spirit, Give, Holy Spirit teaches teaches us, and He gives us power to live the life, to live the life of faith, Amen. to to act in faith. Amen. So all three, all three of these needs to be there. And what the what what does the Holy Spirit says repeats? He the word, the word of God, the word of Jesus Christ. So this Bible, in other words, this Bible or sometimes what you heard from pastor last, on last Sunday, <laughs> for example, I know um, my mom always says like, uh, you, you gotta die on your <laughs> old self nature. <laughs> and I'm pretty much sure that whoever all of you, um, the moment you want to get angry, then you ha you can hear my mom's voice <laughs> ringing in your ears. <sighs> okay, I I'm gonna kill myself. <laughs> I need to kill myself. <laughs> that so, but who brings up? Who reminds that memory? Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit brings up that memory. Holy Spirit rings that voice to your ear. <laughs> but what he recites? The word. The word of God. Amen. The interpretation of the word. Mm -hmm. So all these um, faith, action, or life, Holy Spirit, who is, who is the giver of the power to live that life, and the word, the word of God, which is really direction or manual. This, this Bible, this word, God's word, is actually the manual of our life. Amen. You see, when you buy something, you receive a manual, right? Yes. I, I, when, I bought, when I bought my car, I received a manual. It was like this thick. Mm -hmm. I never looked at it. <laughs> mm -hmm. just, just the first few, few pages. <laughs> but, um, but you, you, if you want to uh, operate or 
if you want to use something properly, you gotta use, you gotta read the manual, right? Yes, yes. If you want to live your life properly, mm. you gotta read the manual. Amen. <laughs> so many people say, I don't know why my life um, goes wrong. I don't know why it happens. I don't know how, what should I do. I'm like, do you read Bible? Mm. And in most of the cases, um, well, I used to, I, don't know, I used to read one chapter maybe, uh, but no more. And I'm like, well, that's why <laughs> you don't read your manual. <laughs> <laughs> and how on earth do you think you can know the way of life mm. while you don't look at it? Yeah. So all these should be there to, uh, accomplish our salvation until the end and live our life um, according to God's will and so that we can be the person that, that God wants us to be. Amen. And believe me, the person God the person whom God wants us to be is the best person that I can be. Amen. It's not it's not the person I dream about. <laughs> That's usually fantasy. <laughs> so, all must be there. This is how it works he, in this New Testament era, in this New Testament time. Now, in the Old Testament time, how did it work? How did it work? It was really the same. In the Old Testament time, they had the law. They had all the writings of the prophets. They had all the historical books. Now, nowadays, every morning, me and my mom and Yuna, we are reading um, Bible together about two hours uh, morning. And now we are reading. We are going through Second Samuel, I think. Mm -hmm. Second Samuel. And when we were reading the Judges, Joshua, First Samuel, and those things, um, I was like. Goodness me, you you have all this. <laughs> Still, you you kept Israelites. Israelites kept stumbling, fumbling, fumbled. They kept fell. They kept falling. But despite the fact they fumbled on, they still had God's word. They still had um, all the writings and the law. And they had God. And also they had the Holy Spirit as well. Um, and I, many pastors and um, scholars, they're not sure the Holy Spirit was, whether, whether the Holy Spirit was really in people in the Old Testament time or not. But this time, as we were reading, we could see some verses, we could read some verses, which says, which say, the Spirit of God was in them, actually. God says, I will, I give my Spirit into you. My, my Word is in you. So, as I was reading those verses, I said to myself, so the Holy Spirit was really, actually, in the, even in the Old Testament time, Holy Spirit was reside within us. Amen. So it's still the same. And as I as I have said over and over again, Israel people, they were also saved by faith. Amen. Right? And they were not saved of, saved by law. Mm -hmm. No. The no. law was way the law was given way after they were saved. Amen. So they it's 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 exactly the same. They had they were saved by faith. And they, how can, how can, then how can they prove that they were saved? How can they prove that they, their relationship with God became righteous now? Their relationship with God has been changed from enemies to a father and children through their lifestyle. Amen. And for that, God gave them the law. The law was... The law was really uh, God's word, wasn't it? Um, Which we have now here. Actually, we have more God's words than they <laughs> did. <laughs> At that time, they had just Old, Old Testament. 
Now we have 27 more New Testament. <laughs> so they had, they were saved by faith. They they had to show they had they had to prove uh, their faith through their lifestyle, through their lives, Amen. and the Holy Spirit was within them, mm. giving them power, mm. plus God was with them also. Yeah. So I think at that time it might be even easier. <laughs> yeah. um, so anyway, God and Holy Spirit was with them, Holy Spirit was within them, helping, uh, helping them, and they had the law, yeah. just like we have the Bible mm -hmm. right now. So it's exactly the same. God is just really repeating again, but in a bit bigger scale. <laughs> now at that time, in the Old Testament time, it was given only to Israel people. God's law was revealed to Israel's, Israelites only, because at that time, um, the, human, the humankind, whole mankind was not mature enough to accept God's law in general, so God gave them, God revealed Himself and gave His law only to Israelites. And His original plan was to spread out through Israel people, but um, <clears throat> they failed, so, and God knew it, so God began the plan B, which was Jesus Christ. <laughs> Jesus Christ came on this earth as true Israel. Oh. And he completed the law. He met the demand, uh, demand of the law, and he freed us from the law, the law's demand. When when Paul says we are freed from the law, it's really we are freed from the demand of the law. Amen. The demand for execution. Mm -hmm. That's what we are freed of, freed from. Mm -hmm. But. Any other things? They're still, it's still there. So, that's, that could be shown. Mm, where's that? In verse 14. In verse 14. The entire law is summed up in a single command. Love your neighbor as yourself. Amen. And this word, Jesus said this word as well. Amen. So now the whole mankind has been matured enough. Mm. The true light, the true salvation, which is Jesus Christ, has been shown. So now God is saying, okay, until now, because you didn't know well, I wrote all the laws case by case in detail. Mm. That's what you need when you are young and you don't understand well. You see, when you want to teach something to a young child, you need to write down in every little detail. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, the child wouldn't understand. Mm. <laughs> you cannot just say, this is what I want to, this is the principle or the core theme that I want you to live in your life. And consider this theme and just decide your lifestyle by yourself. You cannot do this to a seven-year-old child. <laughs> She, that child does not have that ability, that kind of thinking or considering ability. So when child is young, you have to write down all little, all little details. So you gotta, like, you gotta get up in seven o'clock in the morning, you gotta brush your teeth every morning and evening, you, you, have, to, you have to eat balanced diet, <laughs> all these small things. You have to, ha you have to, teach them in detail. But when the child grows up, you don't have to give all the list yeah. of a living house code, living code, right? Mm. That's just binding, really, restricting mm. the boundary of life. Mm. That child, your child doesn't need that anymore. Yeah. All you need to do, all, all you need to tell that tell your child is, um, now, well, you got to manage your life well, mm -hmm. you have to consider your life uh, in the future, for, uh, directing your life well, so according to that standard, mm -hmm. according to that, now manage your life mm -hmm. by yourself, 
Yeah. You have that much ability now. Mm -hmm. Then according to that, well, child that child would can because she can th she or he <laughs> can think now. Mm -hmm. If, for example, if I have work, then it means there even though there is no law, no house code says you gotta you have to get up at seven o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. If I have a job, that then that means I have to get up early <laughs> yeah. to go to my work. <laughs> now you have the ability to think that at least that much. Amen. So by that time, you don't need any more that kind of law. It's the same. It's exactly the same. In the Old Testament time, because all, because all mankind was young, mm -hmm. God gave, and even Israelites they were young too. So God gave them the law in detail. But now, in the New Testament time, Jesus, the, the completion of the law came. Mm -hmm. And he says, I am the core of the law. Amen. <laughs> so consider me and think and decide how you are going to follow me. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's up to you. But I'm going to show you the true core, the true value of life, the what God wants to you. Mm -hmm. So that's what Paul says here all the time. Um, and that's why in actually that's why in verse 23 uh, verse 23 after Paul mentioned mentioned all the fruit the fruit of the spirit he says against such things against such <laughs> characteristics mm -hmm. of the fruit of the spirit there is no law no. what does that mean the law is not actually against the spirit. Yeah. That's what it what it means. Mm -hmm. Paul says, "You see, you you misunderstand. Mm -hmm. You you think the spirit is against to the law. No, no, no. But you see, this is the fruit of the spirit. This is what would appear in your life, mm -hmm. and there's no way. There's no way that law is against that. Mm -hmm. So actually, the law." God gave before several thousand years ago, and the spirit is consistent, is actually one. That's what Paul says here. Amen. Okay, then now, what is the life by the spirit? <laughs> from, from verse 16, now Paul says in a very uh, short length, he explains, he, he, he rather compares the life following the sinful desire, mm -hmm. <clears throat> the desire of nature, the desire of our flesh, and the life walking with the Spirit. The life bearing the fruit of the Spirit. And seriously, you can have sermons on each characteristics of this fruit of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> But it'll take nine even more weeks, so I'm not gonna do that. Mm -hmm. I, I just want to um, point you out a couple of points. First, it is quite interesting that Paul used the word work regarding the result from the flesh mm -hmm. right while he used the word fruit when he described the result of the life with the spirit. Mm -hmm. It's, it's a little bit odd, it's a little bit strange, because if you say it, it's a basic thing, when you, write, when you write an essay in English, I was taught this when I was in IELTS <laughs> class, my teacher said, my teacher taught us, if you use one word, unless you are 100% sure that another word has the same meaning with this, don't use different word. Don't use another word. Because even though it, the meaning might seem similar, it's not exactly the same. So, well, if you use another word, then unconsciously you, can, you might twist the meaning. And so don't do that, my teacher taught me. So that means if we apply that formula <laughs> here, the poll should have used either 
the word work mm -hmm. for both cases, both flesh or the spirit, or he had he should have used the word fruit for for both flesh and spirit. But he but here he used a different word. Yeah. And actually the the word these two words work and fruit they don't even have the same meaning. <laughs> Just by looking, you can tell the difference. Because work, work is something you do. You do actively, isn't it? While fruit, well, I don't know, but I, well, I cannot guarantee because this because I'm not a tree, but I don't think tree really works <laughs> to bear its fruit. <laughs> no, tree, a tree just bears its fruit naturally, isn't it? So. Paul uses two very different words here. One, in the first case, in case of flesh, he uses the word work, which means you do something actively and requires the payment. Mm -hmm. When you say work, it's usually it usually involves the meaning of payment, salary, isn't it? Um, you don't work you don't work for nothing. <laughs> In case of spirit, Paul used the word fruit. Why? Because that's how our flesh thinks and the way of the life with spirit is different. Amen. The way of our flesh, if we live our lives according to our old selves, according to our old thinking way, we always think it we always think everything as work, even God's work. <laughs> we always consider them as work. I do actively. I commit myself into this activities. And and what's the what's the conclusion? Natural conclusion from that? I need payment. <laughs> mm. If you if you work for something actively. Mm -hmm then naturally you would expect some sort of payment, yeah. some sort of reward, isn't it? Just, just like I said a moment ago, you work for nothing. I know our sister Yuna had worked uh, voluntarily <laughs> for three months, but still there was a promise for, regarding her future. That's why she could do, she could Kept, she could keep working, even though there was no payment really, because it, it although the payment was not in monetary form, still there was some other kinds of payment. Yeah. That's the work, and that's how our old self and all people in this world think regarding the life. I do something. And God needs to repay me. <laughs> that's how God. That's how our old self and all other people who do not live by the Spirit mm. are thinking. That's their thinking way. Mm. Working, working. <laughs> Paul says the way of life for those who live by the Spirit is different. Mm. It's not working. It's bearing. It's bearing the fruit. How a tree, how does a tree bear fruit? Naturally. As long as it is alive, as long as it is in good condition, yeah. it bears a fruit. If it doesn't bear a fruit, it means there there's something, there's some problem with this tree. Yeah. There's some problem, there's some issue with the with the health of this tree. Yeah. That so Paul says, if you if you are a person, if you are a man, live by the spirit, then as long as you are in good health, as long as you're in good condition, you are in good connection with the spirit, naturally the fruit, the characteristics of the fruit of the spirit will appear in your life. Amen. It's not you do something actively and you expect reward from God. And that's, that's the biggest difference. Because this is the fruit, I didn't do it. I, 
That's not my doing, isn't it? Yeah. So I would not, the, the man of spirit would not respect reward for this. The man, a man of spirit would not respect a reward because I love you. <laughs> I, I love that my enemy, so God, should, you should reward me. No, that's not how man of spirit would live. Man of spirit would live just following God's word naturally, and would, he would not expect reward or payment from God. I don't. I'm not saying there would be no payment. <laughs> I'm not saying there would be no blessing from God at all. God would bless, but there is a difference. If you expect that from the beginning, and if you and you don't expect, but you just do it, <clears throat> there's a difference in your attitude. So that's that's the first difference between the way of life of flesh, the way of life of flesh and the spirit. That's the first difference. The flesh thinks everything in working and repayment <laughs> formula. <laughs> that's, that's really Satan's formula. And that's how all our economy is, going, is, oper is being operated. Mm. We, we do something and we get repayment. Mm. <clears throat> all how economy is going around. God's economy, God's society does not work in that way. Mm -hmm. God's society, naturally we love, naturally we give, naturally we are happy, joyful, mm -hmm. naturally we share. Amen. You don't expect in return um, for your kindness. Amen. That's the first thing. And the second thing I want to point you out is um, this you can see all these um, um, characteristics of the fruit of the spirit love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self control. Mm -hmm. You see, <clears throat> let's read the verse 22 again, verse 22 and verse 23 again. Ready, go. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. <coughs> you see... <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. You see, um, one interesting thing is, here Paul says, the fruit of the Spirit. He didn't say the fruits of the spirit. Mm -hmm. You see the difference? No S. Singular. No S. It's singular. Mm -hmm. It's one fruit. It's not a cluster of a grape. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a singular one mm -hmm. fruit. fruit. One fruit. So in one fruit there are uh, nine different tastes. <laughs> Amen. Very, wow. very wonderful fruit. Very delicious. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So it's actually quite wrong, mm. quite incorrect when someone, if someone says, oh, I'm quite strong in love, but I am quite weak in self-control. Mm. No. No. They, they are really all connected. They are really one. Amen. So you cannot treat them in two different things or nine different things, really. <clears throat> so um many people many people think that think in that way I, even when I was in my Bible college my one of the ass assessment assessments I did was like this we had to figure out we had to present we had to do the presentation before the class and we had to say in which fruit of the Holy Spirit I am the strongest and in which fruit of the Holy Spirit I am the weakest one. And I, I actually said, well, I think I'm, my, I was a bit opposite from the rest of my class members. <laughs> Quite many of my class members, they said they, are, they were weak in self-control 
in such thing as、um, patience or self control. I actually said、um, I think、um, probably self control part. I'm a bit strong, but I think the weakest one. Would be the love, <laughs> but now I know love is not here. When、uh, Paul says love, it is not really lovey dovey thing. <laughs> not a comfort, cozy, happy, happy,、mm -hmm. exciting thing. No, this love is very far away from that.、Mm -hmm. If you want to know the definition of this love, go to chapter thirteen of First Corinthians.、Mm -hmm. There, from verse four to seven. There, you can have the long definition of this love, and that love is is quite distant from being is excited or happy or thrilled, something like that. It starts with patience. It starts with I think it starts with like this. Love is patient, <laughs> and it ends with it endures everything. <laughs> It's not. It doesn't sound funny, really. It doesn't sound interesting at all. But anyway, so that was how I、uh, presented myself before the class. But that's now I recall that memory, and I know now it was not really correct way of saying because I. It's it's just not possible. I cannot. Say I am strong in self control while I'm in weak. I'm weak in love. If I am weak in love, that means I am also weak in self control as well.、Mm -hmm. It's just I don't recognize that.、Mm -hmm. I I can't. I couldn't see that. But just because I couldn't see that, it doesn't mean that I'm strong in that.、Mm -hmm. <laughs> It's just my ignorance.、Mm -hmm. So here is a little small tip for you. If you want to know how big is your fruit of the Holy Spirit, how mature you are, in, or how strong、uh, your walking with the Holy Spirit is, read all these nine characteristics of、uh, of the fruit of the Spirit and choose the weakest one. <laughs> choose the least confident one. <laughs> For you,、mm -hmm. in in my case, I actually read this, and I I read this in Message Bible as well,、mm -hmm. <laughs> because in Message Bible、uh, writes this in a more contemporary English,、mm -hmm. and according to Message Bible, after I read Message Bible, I thought myself、uh, probably the weakest one for me would be the kindness, <laughs>、mm -hmm. <laughs> because according to Message Bible, it says. Like that, you are compassionate <laughs> to someone, and that's really I'm the weak, <laughs> the part I'm weak. <laughs> I'm、um, so, and so the pick the weakest characteristics of these nine, and that's how you that's how big is your fruit of the spirit.、Um, All the other things that you think you are stronger than that. It's just your confusion.、Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> it's just your misunderstanding. You,、yeah. It's just you overvalue yourself. <laughs>、mm -hmm. <Yeah> . <laughs> your the weakest one is your size. Is your actual size. Yeah.、Uh, I'm not making you despair. <laughs> I'm just saying.、Um, I'm just saying. And actually, the the smaller you are, it means you have more、uh, possibility to grow bigger. So yeah, it's joyful one too. Anyway, so bear in mind these these all nine characteristics are in the same one. So when we walk, when we live with the spirit, in all area, in every area, you see, if we become mature in all these nine characteristics more and more. That means we become more mature in all areas of our lives. It covers pretty much every area in our lives, isn't it?、Yeah. It covers the love. It basically it covers all the relationship with other people. 
self-control, patience, it covers how, uh, how the attitude regarding dealing with our job or hardship in our life. Mm -hmm. So the, in these nine characteristics, these nine characteristics really cover all the areas of our life. Amen. That means so when we walk, when we live with the Holy Spirit, he, he makes us grow into a bigger and more mature person in every area, Amen. not in just one area. Mm -hmm. That's why our good God is good. Amen. The conclusion, so now the conclusion. Let's read together verse 25. All together. Ready? Go. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. And verse 24 also. Let's read. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the sinful nature with its passions and desires. This is our current status. Whether you believe it or not, we are already crucified. We are already hung on the cross. <laughs> And you remember what my mom or any other pastors always talk when they talk about the crucifixion? Once you are crucified on a cross, there's no way you can live. Uh, you, now you cannot, um, you cannot come back to life. <laughs> you cannot heal from that wound. It's critical. It, it's lethal. The wound is lethal. There is no chance, no possibility at all that you can revive again. So the only hope for those who are crucified is to be dead quickly, actually. Dying, Dying quickly is their only hope. The, the more effort they put to, to survive longer on the cross, it, mean, it just means the longer suffering. Yeah. And that's our current situation. We are already on the cross. When we accepted Jesus, when we accepted Him by faith, we are already crucified on the cross. Now we are dying. It, oh, it's just, it takes some time. That's another, that's another unique thing of death on, on the cross. It takes time. It's not just beheading. It's not like beheading. Within a second, you you are die, you are dead, like that in the behead in case of beheading. But in case of crucifixion, it takes at least hours. For strong men, it even took a week, seven days, for that man to die. That's how difficult. How terrible, how, how painful <clears throat> for our old selves to be, die to be dead. But, but the end is already fixed. Yes. The moment we are, we are nailed on the cross, <laughs> <laughs> the end is fixed. Amen. Yeah, death, death is fixed. Amen. So our old self the fate of our old self is already fixed. We're gonna, uh, our old self will be dead. Yes. <laughs> so what should we do? <laughs> we just don't keep, don't try to keep living or don't try to be alive <laughs> on the cross <laughs> longer. No, it'll just prolong your pain yeah. more. Instead, just surrender to the Spirit, just quickly, mm. as quickly as you can. Mm. Then it will shorten Amen. Amen. our distress, mm -hmm. um, our suffering, inner sufferings, mm. all those things. And in that way, we can accomplish the law and serve one another. That's, that's the way of the life with the Spirit. Amen. For that, God gave the law, God gave this word, God gave his spirit. 
Alleluia. I'm, I know that all of you are doing well. Okay. I'm just, you know, that's what a minister does. <laughs> Repeating the same word again. <laughs> every week, every Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> to remind you, to, actually to remind my, to myself. <laughs> yeah. I'm the first hearer I need uh, to be heard. So, thank you. Uh, all right, let's pray.